Hello everybody and welcome to the Stitch Wraith number 4, yes we are here. Uh, this is Step Closer, the epilogue. Uh, again, don't have much to say. Uh, if you haven't watched the other ones before this, the other three, then please go and watch my other audiobooks first, uh, if you haven't read them of course. Um, but yeah, we are continuing on from last time. It seems like this one is going to be a little bit about Jake, uh, which is fun. Also, I should probably do that, sorry. Um, yeah, this one's going to be a bit about Jake, um, which is always exciting. So yeah, if you do like this video, then please like and subscribe to me so you can see the next few parts when they come out um, very soon. Anyway, let's get straight into this. Jake looked down at himself and tried to get used to the fact that himself wasn't anything like the himself he'd been used to being before. Last he could remember, he'd been a little boy. He hadn't been a boy in a while. He didn't know how long. So it wasn't totally weird that he wasn't in a little boy's body anymore. But it was still pretty weird that he was in a thing that wasn't alive. It was also weird that he couldn't remember exactly who he'd been when he was a little boy. He had vague bits of memories, but they didn't make sense. Like, he could remember thinking it would be fun to come back to life as a puppy or a kitten, but why would he think that? Now here he was, inside a metal thing. He didn't know enough about anything to understand what it was, but he did know he wasn't alone, he was sharing this strange place. It was like waking up in another family's house. Hello? Jake said. Who's talking? A child voice asked. Asked. Uh, the child sounded like a little... like... A boy Jake used to know in school. A boy who was always talking back to the teacher and getting himself in trouble. Oh, hi, Jake said. I'm Jake. Who are you? What's it to you? Um, I was just being friendly. Jake remembered learning that the way to deal with kids like this was to let them be as tough as they wanted to be. Sorry, I'm Andrew. The child's voice was rough. He didn't sound like he was saying his name. It sounded like he was throwing down a challenge. Hi, Andrew, Jake said. Why can't I see anything? Andrew demanded. You can't see the truck? Jake asked. If I could see the truck, do you think I'd say I can't see anything? Jake thought Andrew sounded ang angry, very angry. Sorry, Jake said. Um, so we're in the back of what I think might be a trash truck. We're with a lot of junk. Figures, Andrew said. How come? Jake asked. Story of my life. What do you mean? Andrew ignored the question. How come you can see and I can't? He sounded like he was gearing up for a, for a tantrum. I'm really sorry. I'm not sure, Jake said. I mean, I know we're in some kind of metal thing. I don't know, some kind of entity or something. I can see what's around it, but I don't know how I got here. And so I don't know how you got here. And I sure don't know why I can see and you can't. But maybe I can help you see. Do you know how you got here? Andrew was silent for a minute. Jake waited. Well, it might have had something to do with the stuff I was in. What stuff? Jake asked. How is it any of your business? Andrew snarled. Jake sighed. It's not. I just thought it would be nice to be friends and friends get to know each other. So I just wondered what you meant by being in stuff. The truck ground to a stop and there was silence. I haven't had a friend in a long time, Andrew said. His tone was defensive, as if he was darling Jake to make fun of him. D a darling? Daring Jake to make fun of him, sorry. I'm so sorry, Jake said. His memories were disjointed and muddled, but he remembered he'd had friends. That's awful. Jake wanted to know more, but he knew better than to keep asking questions. The back of the truck opened, and a guy in coveralls started unloading the junk. I could be your friend, Jake said. Why would you want to be my friend? I just like making friends, Jake said. So how do we do that? Do what? Make friends. Andrew made an exasperated puffing sound. Jeez, you're dense. Jake felt like he was making first contact with a new species, like in sci-fi movies he could remember watching. We talk to each other, tell each other things, and find out more about each other. And then we become friends, Jake said. He figured that was close enough. Like what things? Andrew asked. Whatever you want. Jake wanted to ask again about what Andrew meant by being in stuff, but he waited. Andrew was silent for a few seconds. Have you ever been so angry you just wanted everyone to know it? Jake thought about it and remembered a time he was really angry because he had to leave school. But why? It didn't really matter. 
I've been really angry, he said. But I guess I didn't need everyone to know it. But I had someone to talk to. Did you? No. Jake wasn't sure what to say, so he stayed quiet. Did you want to get back at the person you were angry with? Andrew asked. I don't think it was a person. I think it had to do with being sick or something. My memories are kind of fuzzy. Fuzzy. Yeah, so are mine, Andrew said. But I do remembering... But, but I do remembering want to, wanting... <laughs> does that make any sense? But I do remembering wanting to get back at someone who hurt me. I don't know if that made sense, but... Um, I think I attached myself to him. I got into his soul, made sure he couldn't move on when he should have died. I remember I wanted him to suffer the way he made me suffer, but I don't remember what he did. I just know I hung on, no matter what they did to him to try to save him. And I wanted him to hurt. At one point, Jake can hold back any longer. He blurted, That's terrible you felt so bad. Shut up. Just shut up, Andrew yelled. I don't need your stupid sympathy. Sorry. Several seconds passed. Then Andrew, Andrew had more to say. I remember they tried to kill him, but I wasn't going to let him go until I was ready. It's weird. I remember being so angry and determined, but I don't know why. It hurt Jake to be so close to this much hate, but he wouldn't have left if he could have. Andrew needed him. You're still there? Andrew asked Jake. Yes, I'm listening. You told me to shut up. Andrew laughed. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Jake was quiet. Then he said, So where is the person now? The one you're angry with? I'm not sure. I know I was in him when we got to this big place with lots of cool stuff. All I can remember after that is wanting to be everywhere. I can remember being all over the place and all kinds of things, and I remember this animatronic dog, Fetch. He broke down in a thunderstorm. Sucky toy. Not made well. Andrew made a raspberry sound. Then he sighed. So, I think I was in Fetch. Sort of. I think that's how I got here. I don't know why I think that, I just do. Jake stayed silent. He was still watching the man unload the truck. You can talk now, Andrew said. I don't know what to say, Jake said. I feel bad that you went through something that was really bad. The man reached for, Jack, uh, for Jake and Andrew's container. Jake had been wondering what to do about the man. He thought moving what what they were in would startle the man, but now he didn't really have a choice. He didn't want the man to throw Andrew and him away, so Jake moved, which meant the thing they were in moved. Jake saw the man stare in alarm. Wanting to comfort the man, Jake reached out to touch his face. The man screamed and grabbed his head. Collapsing on the gravel behind the truck, the man's body began to wither like he was a sponge being wrung out by an invisible hand. As his body sucked in on itself, his eyes fell inward, disappearing, and black streaks ran down the man's cheeks. What just happened? Jake shouted. He jumped out of the truck and stared at the, de at the, at the bald man's body. I can't see, dummy, Andrew snapped. What are you talking about? I just thought about touching a guy's face and he died. Why did he die? Jake realised he was screaming, but he couldn't help himself. Why are you asking me? Andrew was sounding defensive again. The other guy died too. I just remembered, Jake said. It's probably me, Andrew said. Could it be Fetch, the dog? Jake asked. Nah, it's me, I bet. You want to kill people? No, then why? I just want to scare people, okay? Like, you know, give them a zap. The zap is killing them. Well, that wasn't what I wanted. Okay, Jake thought a second. So if what you're doing isn't doing what you want, maybe it's doing something someone else wants. Maybe something else is in here with us. In this thing, you mean? Yeah, like a hitchhiker. Or like a flea on a dog. That's stupid, Andrew said. You were a hitchhiker on the man who killed you. Why can't someone else hitchhike with us? Andrew was silent for a second. Then he said, It just sounds dumb. The thing is, Jake said, that if you did do it, somehow, whatever is causing you to do it could be in everything you got into. I infected them. I remember now. What? I infected everything I threw my anger at. Okay, so everything you infected could hurt people, innocent people. Hey, I'm not like that. I just wanted to hurt the bad guy. But you said you infected stuff with your anger. You didn't think that would hurt them? Shut up. Fine, I'll shut up. But we're going to find all the stuff you infected. How are you going to do that? 
You won't help me? Why should I? Jake thought for a second and then tried something. He wasn't sure he could do it. But, yes, he could. He could feel Andrew's thoughts. He'd be able to find the stuff Andrew infected, even without Andrew's help. Huh, interesting. So clearly they're inside the Stitch Wraith, right? And and this was the basis for, like, Golden Duo. Oh, no, no the, the, the beginning of Golden Duo was uh, the new kid, wasn't it? Yeah. But this kind of further further clarifies it. Huh, this is very interesting, because I know a little bit about, about Jake because I've read things in the future. <laughs> uh, and in the far future, we're actually going to get... Well, actually, not that far future now. In the future, we're going to get a story about Andrew too. So this is this is very interesting. This is very interesting. Anyway, thank you so much. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the end. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to see the next parts, uh, they will be up very soon. And yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. And I will see you later. Goodbye.